teman-teman media yang saya hormati setelah menerima kunjungan Sekjen Gulf Cooperation Council atau GCC melakukan kunjungan ke Kuwait, ke Bahrain dan kemarin menerima kunjungan Menteri Luar Negeri India hari ini saya mendapat kehormatan untuk menerima Dr. Zahbat Sarif, Menteri Luar Negeri Iran Selamat datang di Indonesia, Dr. Sarif. Welcome to welcome back actually to Jakarta, Indonesia. Sebelum melakukan kunjungan ke Indonesia, Dr. Sarif juga telah melakukan kunjungan ke beberapa negara Asia, antara lain China, Jepang, Malaysia, dan Bangladesh. Selama pertemuan, kami berdua telah melakukan stock taking perkembangan hubungan bilateral kita dan juga melakukan tukar pikiran mengenai berbagai isu kawasan dan dunia. Di bidang hubungan bilateral, kami membahas beberapa perkembangan kerjasama dan kegiatan yang dilakukan oleh kedua negara, antara lain penyelenggaraan konsultasi konsuler kelima yang baru saja yang dilakukan di Yogyakarta pada tanggal 27 Agustus tahun ini, kemudian penyelenggaraan dialog mengenai hak asasi manusia di Surakarta pada bulan September, kemudian delegasi Komisi Yudisial dan Hukum Iran telah berkunjung ke Indonesia Agustus tahun ini, dan delegasi Parlemen Indonesia baru saja melakukan kunjungan ke Iran pada pertengahan Agustus yang lalu. Selain itu, saya juga menyambut baik ke kemajuan kerjasama bilateral di bidang pemberdayaan perempuan dan kesehatan. Pada bulan April 2019, Indonesia menjadi tuan rumah pelaksanaan pertemuan yang membahas Sharing Best Practices on Women Economic Empowerment Through Home Industry Model yang juga dihadiri oleh Iran. Baru beberapa hari yang lalu, Health Business Forum dilakukan di Jakarta. Kegiatan yang sama menurut rencana juga akan dilakukan di Iran pertengahan September mendatang. Kegiatan ini akan mendorong kolaborasi, kemitraan bisnis dan inisiatif bersama antara Indonesia dan Iran di bidang alat kesehatan dan farmasi. Masih di bidang kesehatan, dalam kesempatan Health Business Forum tersebut, delegasi nanoteknologi dari Iran juga berkunjung ke Indonesia. Kedua negara juga akan bekerja keras untuk meningkatkan perdagangan bilateral dan upaya ini telah dibahas dalam pertemuan pertama Technical Meeting on Economic and Finance pada bulan Mei tahun ini. Selain itu, kita juga membahas beberapa isu kawasan dan internasional, tentunya termasuk isu yang terkait dengan Timur Tengah. Indonesia kembali menegaskan posisi prinsip Indonesia bahwa Indonesia ingin melihat Timur Tengah sebagai kawasan yang damai, stabil, dan sejahtera. Indonesia meyakini bahwa tidak akan ada perdamaian dunia jika tidak ada perdamaian di Timur Tengah. Indonesia mengharapkan semua pihak ikut berkontribusi dalam menciptakan stabilitas dan perdamaian di Timur Tengah. Berbagai perbedaan dan konflik di Timur Tengah penting untuk segera diselesaikan melalui dialog. Beberapa prinsip antara lain penghormatan terhadap kedaulatan wilayah negara dan non-interference urusan dalam negeri-negara lain perlu terus dijunjung. Mengenai GCPOA, secara prinsip Indonesia ingin melihat bahwa kesepakatan GCPOA masih dapat dijalankan secara penuh dan efektif. Isu Palestina tentunya merupakan salah satu isu yang perlu terus menjadi perhatian dunia. Indonesia secara konsisten menekankan bahwa solusi dua negara merupakan satu-satunya solusi jika kita ingin melihat perdamaian yang lestari. Demikian yang dapat saya sampaikan. 
saya mengundang dengan hormat Menteri Jawad Sarif untuk menyampaikan pandangannya. Please, Jawad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all of you. It's a good Friday, good Friday morning to to all of you. Uh, and it's great to be back in Jakarta. I uh, thank my sister Ratna for her hospitality and for a very good meeting that we just had. As she said, we discussed a multitude of bilateral and regional and global issues. Uh, we share many concerns, uh, many uh, similar views uh, about the need for cooperation among developing countries, the greater achievements that we can have through engagement and through bilateral cooperation uh, for the two people as well as for regional and global security uh, have been discussed by, by both of us as well as by many delegations that have come to Indonesia from Iran as well as from uh, Iran to Indonesia, particularly over the past few days where we had a traffic of many Iranian delegations, both on human rights, parliamentary cooperation, scientific and technological cooperation, uh, and other areas, consular cooperation. Uh, and we want to see greater uh, areas of uh, integration between in Iran and Indonesia, two leading Muslim countries in the field of science and technology, uh, and we can help each other and synergize our uh, achievements together in order to have a greater uh, prospect for prosperity of our peoples and the Muslim world. Uh, we also discussed uh, regional issues, uh, the need for uh, cooperation, inclusion and understanding in the Persian Gulf region. I reiterated uh, to my sister uh, the possibilities that we have put on the table for dialogue uh, with our neighbors in the Persian Gulf, including uh, a regional dialogue forum that we have proposed and a non-aggression pact that we have proposed with the countries in the GCC as well as Iraq. Uh, the eight of us constitute the countries around the Persian Gulf, the Strait of Hormuz and the Sea of Oman that need to engage together for greater cooperation. I have stressed to our friends in the region as well as our friends outside the region that security for this region cannot be purchased from outside and security cannot be attained at the expense of each other. Security can only be attained through cooperation and inclusion. And this is what we have put on the table and we call on our neighbors to engage in that. On Palestine, we believe that the current attempts to impose basically a real estate solution on Palestine are doomed to failure because Palestine is a cause. Palestine is a national aspiration. Palestine is the first Qibla of the Muslim world. It's not a piece of real estate. It cannot be bought, sold and bought. The aspirations of millions of Palestinians who have stayed outside their homeland for so many years cannot be simply wiped out by a stroke of the pen. It cannot be wiped out through a business deal. And we agree that Palestinians' rights need to be respected, the right, their right to self-determination, their, their right to a homeland, their right to a state of their own with al Quds Sharif as its capital, are the common positions that Iran and Indonesia have always held. And we will be continuing with those positions within the OIC, within the non-aligned movement, and at the United Nations, where we have very good cooperation within Indonesia. We also discussed uh, the JCPOA, the Iran uh, nuclear accord, and uh, I explained to her how Iran has been trying to safeguard this, uh, this agreement, which constitutes an achievement of diplomacy. The measures that we have taken uh, have been prescribed in the JCPOA, in paragraph 36 of the JCPOA, 
as remedies for United States withdrawal, its reimposition of illegal restrictions on Iran, which we call economic terrorism, because they target ordinary Iranian citizens. Uh, President Trump calls them warfare. We call them terrorism because they target the citizens, uh, the civilians of, of Iran, uh, and also the failure of the Europeans to implement their part of the bargain. We have said repeatedly that the minute they come back into compliance, we are prepared to reverse the measures, the temporary measures that we have taken in order to remedy the non-compliance that they've had with JCPOA. And we also, like uh, our Indonesian friends, call on everybody to fully implement JCPOA and Security Council Resolution 2231, which rests on two premises, Iran's nuclear program remaining peaceful and normalization of economic relations with Iran. Unfortunately, the United States not only doesn't normalize its own economic relations with Iran, but punishes others for normalizing economic relations with Iran, which is totally unacceptable. Uh, we will continue to have uh, our bilateral uh, engagement with Indonesia. We will continue to have bilateral cooperation among our private sectors. We hope to be able to receive more Indonesian tourists and to send more tourists to Indonesia so that the people of the two countries, which share a lot of commonalities, could see each other more often and uh, get to know each other more often because we all belong to the same family and that family we need to preserve basically, certainly on a Friday, which is the day of unity of all Muslims. Thank you. Thank you very much.